Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad for the saving power of the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, hallelujah. That we don't have to stay dead, even though we were dead in our trespasses and our sins. We don't have to stay dead, hallelujah, because of what Jesus did. Aren't you glad? Jesus came and gave his life for me and you. Praise God. Well, I'm Pastor Rusty. I'd like to welcome you to the Remnant Online service. We just appreciate so much you joining us. We just are going to have a great time today. We're going to poke some holes in some religious traditions. We're going to kick over some sacred cows. Should be a lot of fun. So anyway, so buckle your seatbelt. Just begin to praise God and worship God with us there at home. Don't be embarrassed. God's going to, we just, we are believing that God is going to fill your, your, uh, your house or your office or wherever you're watching. We believe that the anointing is going to move into that, into that room where you are and yokes are going to be destroyed and burdens are going to be, lift, be lifted because of the anointing. So begin to expect. Turn your expector on. Expect God to be God right where you are right now. You don't have to be in this building because God is where you are. Hallelujah. Are you ready to worship? Hallelujah. Call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, and into your glory. 
precious Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Rejoice because you chose. 
so much. Lord Jesus, we just yield ourselves to you. We yield our hearts to you. We love you. We bless you. We praise you. Father, we're so appreciative that you sent Jesus. And Jesus, we appreciate so much your obedience to go to the cross on our behalf. To take the curse on, on yourself for us. Oh, we so appreciate it. We love you so much. Father, I so love you. Thank you for changing our lives, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Glory to God. Well, the Lord is good, amen? God is a good God. You know, contrary to what some people believe, God is a good God. Oh, hallelujah. We appreciate his goodness. Amen. Hey, we want to give you an opportunity to uh, sow into the remnant. Uh, you can do that. You can text to give. Uh, you can text remnant give, all one word, to 77977. Again, that's remnant give, all one word, 77977. Or you can mail in your gift to P.O. Box 9635, Longview, Texas, 75608. Thank you, praise and worship team. Also, you can go to our website, theremnant.church. Many of you are already there, uh, and click on the donate. Uh, just go ahead. If you'd like to, you can do that now and go ahead and donate, or you can wait till after service and click, click the donate button and follow the prompts there. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. We're just excited about what's going to happen today. We're excited about the lives that are going to be touched. I know that I know that I know. You ever just get a feeling where you know something in your knower? You know, you don't understand. You don't, I, don't, I don't understand it here, but I know it down here. And I know God's going to do something great in your life today. So keep your expectors turned on. Hallelujah, because we've got some great stuff. We've got a great message coming to you because it's not me, it's him. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Glory. You, re you guys ready to hear the word? Well, praise God. If you have your Bibles with you, take your Bible, hold it like this. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. What your neighbor say? The Bible is God talking to you? Point, point to yourself, say, the Bible is God talking to me. Say amen if you believe that. Hallelujah. Well, open with me to Psalms 34. 
Oh, hallelujah. Our home folks, the remnant people, you guys are going to be excited about this verse because I just did like an eight-week series on it, or it may have been longer than that. But when I was praying, seeking God, the Lord just kept bringing this passage up to me and, and these ver verses that I'm going to be using. So I'm just excited to see what God has, has got to say about these things. Amen? Glory to God. Did everybody find Psalm 34? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we love your word. Thank you for your word. Father, your word is the firm foundation that is able to utterly destroy every yoke of bondage that would hold us back, keep us from fulfilling your will and your call on our lives. Father, we yield to that anointing now. Father, we open our minds and we open our hearts to hear what you would say to your church. Father, we toss aside preconceived ideas and man's notions because we want, we want you to speak to us from your word. We want the truth of your word to be sown into our hearts. Now, Father, as I yield to you, Lord, I ask that you would think through my mind, speak through my mouth, minister your word to your people with clarity and with boldness. It be all of you and none of me. And, Lord, I ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone that agrees said, amen. Overwhelming amen in this room. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to begin Psalms 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. Notice that's a decision that I'm going to make. Didn't say I'm going to bless the Lord when things are going good or when it looks good, but I'm going to bless the Lord at all times, even when I'm quarantined. Yeah, it's going to be one of those messages, guys. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. Well, if God has delivered you from all your fears, how many fears do you have left? That would be zero, right? Well, do you know that God has called you to live a fear-free life? We don't have to fear coronavirus. We don't have to fear terrorist attacks. We don't have to fear any of those kinds of things because of seeking the Lord. Because when we seek the Lord, we find out what his will is for our lives. For instance, it says, I sought the Lord. Many people end up uh, in fear because they never seek God. They never seek his guidance. Well, how do you seek him? Right here. You seek him right here in his word. Many Christians, I'm talking people that love God. Oh, they love God with all their heart. But they never open the book for themselves. They never see what God has spoken, not only to them, but about them. They have no clue. So therefore, they live a life of fear. Another thing, it says, verse 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify. What are we supposed to magnify? We're supposed to magnify the Lord. We're supposed to exalt his name. Too many Christians are magnifying the problems, magnifying the coronavirus, listening uh, uh, on TV, feeding, feeding on those things. Magnifying the corruption in politics, feeding on those things. Are you hearing me this morning, church? Uh, Pastor Stephen came in my office Thursday morning, and he had had a dream. And when he woke up, the Lord began to speak to him in his heart. I'm not going to share the whole dream because that, that's for him to share. But something that he spoke uh, really just ministered to me and went right along with this message. And he kind of gave me permission to use it. More or less, I told him I was going to use it, and he didn't say no. So anyway, so here we are, and he said he, he woke up, and he, or he, well, in his dream, he saw this sling, and he knew that it was, a, it was Goliath's sling, I mean, uh, David's sling, and uh, that he used against D Goliath. So anyway, when he woke up, the Lord spoke to him right here in his heart. I don't mean he heard audible voice, but right here in his heart, the Lord said, my people 
are listening to Goliath. And I feel like that's what the church is doing. We're listening to Goliath. We're magnifying the things that the enemy is saying and not magnifying what God has said. We need to put our trust in what God has said and not what what the enemy is saying. Coronavirus, they're saying coronavirus is is dangerous. Listen, I respect that. I, I understand that. And to many people, the coronavirus is very dangerous because they don't know what you know. They don't know that we don't have to fear. They don't know all the the other scriptures that we know. Are you hearing me? Because they've never sought the Lord. Listen, the word of God is our final authority on everything. Amen? I said the word of God is our final authority on everything. It's the answer to every question. Hallelujah. People say, well, you know... um, Well, brother, don't you know that the government has said, listen, I respect what the government has said, but I'm not going to exalt the word of the government above the word of God. That's not going to happen. This is my final authority. This, this, I I live by this. I don't live by what somebody else said. I'm going to live my life by this and have for 40 years. Hallelujah. We don't need to fear. If God said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears, then I'm delivered from all my fears. It really is just that simple. I choose to believe God. I'll prove it to you. Let's look at Ephesians. Ephesians, the second chapter. Oh, we think to kick over some sacred cows here. You're going to love this. Ephesians, the second chapter, and the eighth verse said, for by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For by grace are you saved. Do we have that in the Amplified Classic? Can we put this on here, please? Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. For it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor. You can't get good enough to earn it. You can't work hard enough to get it. It's God's unmerited favor. It's because he loves you so very much. He just took this gift and said, here it's yours. He took the gift of salvation and said, here it's yours. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. People say, well, I just don't deserve. You're right. We don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. But thank God I got it anyway because of God's unmerited favor. For it's by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, of your own doing. It came not through your own striving. It didn't come because you got good enough. You know, I hear people all the time saying, well, brother, as soon as I get through, uh, get these things in line in my life, then I'm going to uh, I'm gonna come back to church, I'm going to sell out to God. Understand this, you are never going to get the things in your life that are wrong with your life in line until you come to God. You can't do it. If you could do it, then you wouldn't need Jesus. It came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. Now, the word that's translated saved here is uh, the Greek word sozo. sozo. <clears throat> Do we have that uh, definition here? Sozo, it means safe to save, deliver, protect, literally and figure, or figuratively, he, to heal, preserve, to save the self, do well, and make uh, be whole or make whole. That's what it means. So, sozo means this, saved, healed, delivered, and divinely protected. Saved, healed, delivered, and divinely protected. Do you know that Jesus used this term, this Greek word sozo, interchangeably with salvation and with healing? I've got some scriptures written down here. Mark 5, 34. The woman with the issue of blood, you guys remember hearing that story? Jesus told her, said, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith has sozoed thee. Mark 6, uh, 53, 
they brought the sick into the streets. And as Jesus passed by, as many as touched him were made whole. That's the word sozo. Luke 19.10, Jesus said, The Son of Man came to seek and to sozo, seek and save that which was lost. We saw here in Ephesians 2, it's translated saved. Mark 10, 52, O blind Bartimaeus, Jesus told him, he said, uh, go in peace, uh, go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Jesus used that term uh, interchangeably. But why, why was he able to do that? Because it is, let's put the uh, Second Corinthians, or for, um, where was I anyway? Ephesians, Ephesians back up here, thank you. Notice this, it says, but it is the gift of God. It's not a gift. It's the gift. There's only one gift. His name's Jesus. And it's an all-inclusive gift. Now, this, is, this may rattle your cages because I know many people that, that may be tuning in and listening to this, you may not have heard these things before. But understand this, just because you've never heard them before doesn't make them wrong. Look at the Word. Study it in the Word. Ask God. The whole, if you're saved, then the Spirit of truth is on the inside of you. Amen? So ask Him to guide you into those truths. That's the, the Holy Spirit's job. So ask Him to guide you into those truths, to reveal truth to you. It is the gift, the gift of God. There's only one gift. In that gift is salvation, healing, deliverance, divine protection, and well-being. All of that. Many, many Christians, they only have heard part of the gospel that you don't have to go to hell and you get to go to heaven. Listen, if that, if that was all there was, thank God for that. I'm in. I'm 100% in. <laughs> Believe me, I do not want to go to hell. But thank God I don't have to because, because of what Jesus did. But that's not the end of it. There's more to it than that. It's a complete, a total gift. You know, uh, my wife Ann and I, when we first started in ministry, you know, we didn't know everything we know now. And my Lord, we were poor and broke. And um, we were missionaries to Africa. And every, mo- every bit of money that came into us, we just put it toward mi- the mission trips. Everything. And we were just broke. And so um, I had an old three-quarter ton truck, just an old beater. And so uh, we'd be, we, when we were in the States, we'd have to travel from church to church and minister trying to raise funds so that we could go to uh, go back to Africa, get back in, in country. And so while we were doing that, man, my old truck would break down, and you know I'd have to get it towed and stuff. Well, I found out my insurance company, it had like a, an auto club, and for $5 a month, then you could, and my truck's breaking down more than once a month, so for $5 a month, you could join this auto club, and you get free towing. So I'm like, that's a no-brainer. I'm in on that. So anyway, I joined the auto club, and sure enough, it was great. Man, it was just, you know, when we would break down, I'd just have them tow it to the shop and get, get the truck fixed or tow it to the auto parts store, and I'd buy the parts, fix it myself. Whatever, you know, we needed to do, man, it was just a blessing. Well, one time I was back in Longview, and I was at, uh, at the insurance. He goes, hey, are you taking advantage of that auto club? Because he knew we traveled. Are you taking advantage of that auto club? And, and I said, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, man, I'm, I'm uh, uh, using that, uh, that towing all the time. That, that thing's paying for itself, no doubt. Now, he said, well, what about, that, um, what about the motel discount that you have? And there was a motel chain that was given 20% off. Best Western, that's why the Best Western motel chain could get 20% off because you had this. Now, because you had this auto club. Now, understand this. We would, when we traveled to a church, then to minister before and after the meetings, then the church would put us in a hotel or we'd stay with the pastors or, or whatever the case may be. But when we were between meetings, we would have to pay for the, the room. So we were always just finding the cheapest low-rent motel we could find. Some people call them a roach motel or whatever. But we would find the lowest rent lowest rent place that we could find to stay. It was so bad that Anigail, I would sit in the truck with Cheyenne. Cheyenne was just a baby, and she'd ride between us, and 
So I would sit in the truck with Cheyenne. She would go, Anna would go into the motel with her vacuum cleaner and vacuum everything. She'd go in with her cleaning supplies and clean every surface, pull the sheets off the bed, take sheets that she had brought from home and put them on the bed. That's how bad this was. Well, what I found out is with the 20% discount, I could stay at the Best Western for the same money I was paying for those crummy hotels. Now, my point in telling you that is this. Many people, many people that love Jesus with all their heart, they've never heard the truth. They don't know that health and healing is, is, is provided for them in salvation. They don't know that protection is provided them in, in salvation. They don't know that provision is, is provided them in salvation. Oh, my brother, sister, we need, to, we, need to, we need to wake up. We need to begin to read the word of God for ourselves. Not just, and I, I say this all the time, don't just take my word for it. Don't just take any preacher's word for it. Read it for yourself. Look at it for, for yourself. Now, when you are saved, then verse 6 belongs to you. Let's look at that. This is Ephesians 2, verse 6. And he hath raised us up together. Who's he raised? Me and you. He's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He's raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So not only am I um, saved, healed, delivered, and divinely protected, but I'm also raised up and seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Well, what does that look like? Well, I'm glad you asked. Look at Ephesians 1, chapter 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of this power to usward who believe? Now, let me stop right there. Right now, many of you that are listening, you are having to make a choice. Well, do I believe this? Because many, many, many of you have been taught that healing's been passed away. I know. I have friends that have been taught that. My parents were taught that, that healing had passed away. Well, it just might be God's will for you to be sick. Or God might be teaching you a lesson. Do you know that every single person, you can read through the Gospels, every person that came to Jesus seeking healing left healed? Every single person. Not one person did Jesus go, well, you know, you know, I would heal you, but this is God's will for your life. He's trying to teach you, this, the Father's trying to teach you a lesson through this. Not one time. Nowhere in the New Testament does it say anything like that. I don't even know where people come up with that. I have a term for it, but I won't use it over the internet. My wife will be happy about that. I don't understand that. When clearly... Jesus, every person, even the Syrophoenician woman. Y'all remember reading about her? She wasn't even a covenant person. She was not a, chi a child of, of Abraham. But she came up trying to deceive Jesus, talking like she was a child of Abraham. She came up going, oh, son of David. That's a covenant term. She was trying to trick Jesus into believing that she had a covenant. He just ignored her. Y'all remember reading that? He just ignored her, wouldn't, wouldn't even say anything to her. And finally, when she stopped her deception and began to speak her faith. Oh, come on, man, I just, I just preached myself happy right there. Glory to God. When she began, when she stopped speaking her deception, she began to speak her faith. What'd she say? She said, true, I am a dog. But even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. What did Jesus, how did Jesus respond? Oh, woman of great faith. Oh, woman of great faith. And her daughter was healed from that self-same hour. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody that ever came to Jesus, everybody that was ever came to Jesus, seeking healing, left healed. Hallelujah. Why? Because of what they believed. According to the working of his mighty power, verse 20, which he wrought in, in Christ when he raised him from the dead, sat him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, ever name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world which is to come, and has put all things under his feet, 
and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is the body of which is his body, the fullness of him which filleth all in all. Now, why did Jesus come for you and me? For his body. Why did he suffer for his body? All things have been put under his feet. Well, if all things are under his feet, and I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, then all things are under my feet. All things are under your feet. Listen, all you got to do is just say, hey, I believe that. I mean, that's what faith is. How did you get saved? Ephesians 2, 8, how did you get saved? Someone came and, and gave, gave you the gospel, and you believed it. And then you confessed Jesus as your Lord. How you... Actually, what happened, he came and somebody came and told you the gospel, and you said, that applies to me. I'm going to take that. That's all we have to do. Hallelujah. Look at Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans 8. Romans 8, let's begin in verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen, who is even at the right hand of God, also maketh intercession for us. The question is, who is he that condemneth? Well, it ain't God. It's not God. It's what it's saying. It's not God. God sent his Son to die and then raise him on the third day. And Jesus is making intercession. That means he's standing in the gap for you. He's taking up for you. Do you know this, that Jesus is on your side? He's for you. He's not against you. He's not waiting with a big stick trying to wallop you every time you speak out of turn or every time you step out of line. He's for you. He's rooting for you. He's in your corner. Verse 35 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, that word tribulation means trauma, oppression, or infirmity. Shall tribulation, distress, or persecution, famine, even if it's a toilet paper famine? Guys, it's it's me. Famine or nakedness or peril or sword. Nakedness. If it's, if it's lack, if it's sickness and disease, if it's an infirmity, no matter what it is, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Now many preachers read this like this. Well, you know, oh, for the sake of Jesus. Oh, for his sake, oh, sweet Jesus, his sake, we're killed all the day long. We're accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That's how they read that. But they fail to read the next verse. The next verse starts out like this, nay, you and me say no. Or if you're from East Texas, you say, hang on a minute. Uh Uh-uh. He say, no, in all these things. In uh, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, and uh, peril, and sword. In all these things, you are more than a conqueror. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. More than a conqueror. You want to you know what more than a, being more than a conqueror is? Two guys, they, they've got a big boxing contest going on. Boxing match. I'm not really big in sports. I hate to admit that, but anyway. Uh, I'm not big in it, so if I make mistakes about this thing, you'll just live with me. So anyway, they've got a boxing match, and so they're training. These guys are training. They're doing the fast bag, the heavy bag. They're doing all this stuff, man. They're training. They're running. They're jumping rope, doing all that stuff. And so, man, finally the time for the big fight comes. (laughs) They go to the arena. They got their gloves on. They're ready. And, man, they're throwing punches. I'm being back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, you just don't know which one's going to win. All of a sudden, this one guy, he comes out of of left, left field with a haymaker. Bam, knocks the other one to the mat. The referee, he counts it out, one, two, three, four, ten. And he goes to the guy that he knocked, that that knocked the guy out and raised his hand and declares him the winner. That man is the conqueror. So then he goes to the pay window and he gets his check. He folds it up and puts it in his pocket. 
And then when he goes home, he steps up on his porch, the door opens, and there's his wife opening the door. She's standing there. He reaches in his pocket before he ever goes in the house and hands her that check. He was the conqueror, but she's more than a conqueror. She didn't have to train. She didn't have to fight. She didn't have to do any battling or any of that, but she got the prize. That's what Jesus did for us. I said, that's what Jesus did for us. We didn't have to fight the enemy. We didn't have to defeat the enemy. Jesus did that for us. We didn't have to defeat sickness and disease. Jesus already did that for us. We didn't have to defeat poverty and lack. Jesus already did that for us. All we got to do is Ephesians 2, 8, believe it and then receive it because it was done by grace. Let's keep reading. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Do you know how much God loves you? Do you know? Oh, he loves you so much. My uh, youngest son, Cole, my Lord, he has a revelation of God's love that I would love, I would love for everybody that's listening to hear that. Oh, he has a great, a great series of messages on that. Man, it's good stuff. He understands the love of God. And as he shares it with me, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the edge of my seat listening to that. Nothing can separate us. All these things, we're more than conquerors through Jesus. Amen? Let's go ahead and put Psalms 23, verse 4 up here. Do we have that? Good, 4 and 5, great. You guys are familiar with Psalms 23? It starts off, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Shall not want. I used to think when I was a kid, I'd hear that. The Lord's my shepherd, but I don't want him. But that's not what it means. The Lord's my shepherd, I have no wants. Do you realize your shepherd, he's the one that takes care of you. He's the one that provides for you. He's the one that keeps you safe. Whoa, aren't you glad you got Jesus as your shepherd? And verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The shadow. Didn't say I'm walking through the valley of death. It says I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, to, to Christians, there's, not even, there's no such thing as death. We step out of one realm and step into another. 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Man, that's a win for us. Hey, also, another reason we don't, there's two reasons we don't have to fear when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Number one is God's with us. Number two, shadows can't hurt you. The other night I, or other morning, I had to get out, of, uh, get out of the house real early, well before daylight. And so before I went to bed, I took my clothes and laid them on the couch in the living room so I wouldn't have, wake up my wife uh, when I got up trying to, you know, gather my stuff up. And so I get up that morning, it's dark in there, I didn't turn any lights on, I'm walking in, and there's somebody sitting on my couch. And I'm like, and I ease around and peep, well, it's just my clothes. But the thing is, you, we start to get startled and we start to get fearful about things that can't hurt us. We get fearful and startled about things that can't hurt us. Jesus is our protector. The Word of God has said so. He's given us power over the enemy, all the works of the enemy, Jesus said. Do we believe Jesus? I do. I believe he's the head of the church. I think Jesus probably knows what he's talking about, don't you? He said he's given us power and authority to tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing, no thing shall by any means hurt you. Does that include coronavirus? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's put, this, let's put verse 5 back up there. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Glory to God. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, many people, they read that and go, 
Oh, hallelujah, Brother Rusty. Oh, one of these days when we get to heaven, we're going to sit down at the master's table. Oh, what a glorious day that's going to be, sitting at the master's table. Oh, hallelujah. When we cross over that veil and get to heaven and sit at that table that Jesus told us about. Well, there's a couple of problems I have with that. Number one, he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. My enemy is not in heaven. Jesus said, my enemy is the devil. My enemy is not in heaven. This is not talking about when we get to heaven. This is talking about right now. Listen, I, the shepherd's leading us beside the still waters. He's making us lay down in green pastures. Listen, we don't need that when we're in heaven. We're walking on the streets of gold. Come on now. We don't need him to lead us and guide us. We're going to know, the word of God says, we're going to know as we are known. But here on this earth, that's where I need to be led. Lord, lead me beside the still waters. Lord, lead me down. Lay me down in green pastures. Restore my soul. Hallelujah. And he has prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And thank God, on that table, there is salvation, but there's also health and healing. There's also uh, provision. There's also peace. The peace that Jesus gives. There's a big old helping of it at the table. It's in the presence of our enemies. Listen, I know the giant is screaming loud. I know that he is talking loud. I know that he is, he's screaming. But stop paying attention to him. Turn around and look at what God has put on your table. Stop listening to the giant. The giant's going to squawk. The giant's going to rattle his saber. But when we turn around and we focus on what God's done, on what Jesus has done for us, what the Word of God says about us, oh, hallelujah, our faith rises up and we turn around and we sling that rock of God's Word to that enemy. No, you don't, devil, in Jesus' name. And he falls and he is taken out. Why? Because of faith in God's Word. Oh, hallelujah. Well, oh, thank God. Thank God for his word. I said, thank God for his word. Now, if you're listening and you've never received Jesus as your Savior, please do so today. He loves you so much. He wants you in his kingdom. He's not at all mad at you. People think, well, he's just mad at me because I've failed so much. He is not. He wants you in his kingdom. He loves you. He loves you so much. He sent his son to give you the gift of salvation. He loves you that much. Maybe you're here, you're listening, and you at one time loved God, served God, walked with God, and for whatever reason just became distracted. Started going your own way, doing your own thing, and really just living like you never had been saved. If that's you, please pray this prayer with me now. If either one of those apply to you, ask you to pray this prayer with me right now. Just speak it right out of your mouth. Put your hand on your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, I come in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that Jesus came and died for me. Lord, I thank you that you raised him on the third day. Father, I believe that Jesus, oh, hallelujah, is my Lord. I boldly to conf confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord. I'm going to go where he says, says go. I'm going to do what he says do. I'm going to say what he tells me to say because I believe Jesus is my Lord and my boss. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I want to ask you to do something for me. If you'd uh, go to the website, some of you are already there, go to our website, uh, theremnant.church, click on uh, contact, and please send us your name and, and phone number or name and address. We've got some information we'd like to send you. Also, we have a prayer team uh, here that are trained to pray for you and we would, love, we would love the opportunity to pray with you guys. So if you'd, uh, go, if you'd click, click that link, send us your name and your phone number or your address so that we can get in contact with you. Also, if you need prayer for healing, if you, you're sick in your body, then listen, what I'm say, saying is not a pipe dream. I've lived this for 40 years. My son, I ran over my son um, when he was five years old, backed over his head. Every time the doctors talked to me, they said something about brain damage. There was never a time they didn't say anything about brain damage. 
But I want you to know, I put my trust in God's word. I began to speak the word of God over him. I laid hands on him, prayed for him according to, according to Mark, the 16th chapter. said, these signs will follow them that believe. One of those signs, they'll lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Laid hands on him. You say, well, how'd that turn out? Well, you saw him up here behind the guitar leading praise and worship. That's him. No brain damage. I'm telling you, it's not a pipe dream. This is the word. We can build our lives upon it. We can make it, God will make it happen if we'll put our trust in him. Hallelujah. So if you'd like prayer, do the same thing. Just click. Uh, you can click the prayer request or you can click the, uh, the con uh, contact and just send us your name, phone number. And one of our guys, our, our prayer team, they are, they are trained and, and ready to pray God's healing power into your body. So if you just want to do that, that's, they'll give you a call and uh, it'll be great. Hallelujah. Listen, guys, I love you so much. I just so appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, God bless you, and we'll see you next time.